¿Cómo están? Muy buenas tardes de domingo. Les doy la más cordial bienvenida a esta tercera eh, entrevista exclusiva de nuestra serie Expert Views. El día de hoy tenemos una invitada de primera línea. Eh, ahora mismo se las voy a presentar. Su nombre es Leslie White. Y también, como siempre y por supuesto, nos acompaña Adriana Rodríguez, fundadora de Empodérate Tú Puedes, de Big Big y de todo este gran movimiento del que formamos parte y que estamos compartiendo el día de hoy para ti. Esta entrevista, como otras que vamos a traer, está en inglés porque nuestra invitada es de habla, de habla inglesa, ya vive en Reino Unido, de hecho. Y bueno, eh, después vamos a ver la forma de poderle poner subtítulos cuando subamos a nuestro canal de YouTube esta entrevista para que todos aquellos que quieran comprenderla puedan seguirla. So, I'm presenting you Leslie White. Be very welcome to Empoderate Tu Puedes. I'm going to present you officially. Leslie White is VP of Huawei for the Western European region. She's a senior um, human resources expert with more than 25 years in telecoms industry. Leslie has worked in HR leadership capacity for British, American, and Chinese organizations. Leslie strongly believes in a diverse and inclusive society. She currently holds a senior leadership position as a deputy VP, as I told you, and she is passionate about her work and dedicated to driving equality across social and gender divides. So Leslie, my pleasure, it's an honor to have you here today. Adriana, be very welcome. And well, I'm gonna start today with a simple question for you, Leslie, and then I will let you uh, share all this, all this rich um, content that we have ready for today. And my question for you, Leslie, is why did you choose to work with human resources? Because it's a big, massive, and complicated world in the industry and in the companies. So what's your call? Why did you choose this? Okay, thank you, Paula, for that wonderful introduction. And firstly, I'd like to say it is a pleasure and it is an honor for me also to join this session. And I thank you very much for extending the invitation to me to give you uh, to give me this platform to share with you my views. Now that is a very very deep question, and as I said, it goes back more than 25 years. When I was studying, I found that I was very uh, interested in people, and I wanted to know the motivations of people. I love diversity. I love talking with people, understanding the complexities, what motivates one person may not necessarily motivate another. If you think about when you're studying, some people study a certain way, they will prep, they will prepare for weeks, other people leave it the night before. And I always found that interesting. What, what's the difference? Why are people so different? And I found that I'm very socially interactive and I like to uh, talk, I like to communicate, And, and that kind of got me through my uh, lecturers that they said I would be very good in a people facing position, you know, such as sales or training um, or HR. Um, and I thought that HR, I could touch more people and hopefully uh, influence more change through the human resources function. So that's kind of why I went into HR and I stayed in HR. I found it fascinating, it's changing, it's evolving, it's very complex, and it is the heart of every organization. If you don't have a solid HR function, then all the pieces don't fit together. Together, It's like the glue of an organization. How you motivate, how you recognize drives performance. And if you have engaged and high performing employees, then your company will ultimately perform better. And it was all of these intricate elements that interested me. Oh, 
fascinating. I'm, I'm sure it has a lot of, uh, a lot of developing themes uh, regarding this issue. So Adriana, it's your microphone. Well, thank you. First, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Leslie for the, being in, in Empoderate Tu Puedes. Uh, this is the house of uh, social empowerment uh, with uh, social impact. We are now in 17 countries, Leslie, and we keep growing and we're trying all the professional Latin people around the world to give an impact back to society for all the things that we have received. So this is uh, why uh, you are here to help us. And I know you and I have been experienced, you being my HR the manager for my team as well, many other things because you were in the senior position. And I can only say that I was delighted the way you handled the HR function. And like you say, it is the glue. And without having the finance in one side and human resources in the other side, I think we can get lost as leaders. So some people put a lot of attention on the financials or in the technology and they forget the people. But when you glue them together, then you can make marvelous things, you know? So, but uh, before yeah. I start on the real meat of the discussions, I want to ask you very little simple question, <laughs> just to break the ice to people. Would you prefer to continue living in the United Kingdom or would you like to move to any other part of the world, let's say someplace in Asia or Latin America and learn Spanish? What would you like to do in the next few years? Thank you. That is a lovely question. And although my home and I'm from the UK, obviously I'm British, um, I have uh, lived in China for one and a half years in Asia. So I worked at Huawei headquarters. And now I'm actually work located in our uh, regional office, which is in Dusseldorf in Germany. So for me, uh, to understand culture, to understand diversity, I have to be a part of that. I have to experience that. So for me, it's all part of the journey. And I would love uh, to continue that journey and work in more countries. In fact, I did spend one month on a project in Mexico and I loved it. And I was introduced to tequila for the first time, and I loved it. So oh, I've good. been very happy. So we will have to take <laughs> you back for a real chat with some <laughs> high-level ladies, so you can give us a, a really one-to-one -one, uh, discussion or one-to-many personal discussion on leadership. So I think the mm -hmm. second question then will be quite easy for you then. Uh, so you will prefer to work with for multinationals, multicultural uh, companies, or would you like just to work for just British or European companies? No, I would definitely prefer the multinational, the more uh, culturally diverse. It makes it interesting, it makes it challenging, it's never the same, no two days are the same. And again, it comes back to this HR, sort of how we can fit the business, that no one solution is all, because everybody is unique, every country is unique. And that's what I like, exploring what suits best that country. So I very much prefer the multinational diverse. We're going to try it with the next questions. Would you prefer fish and chips or a very nice uh, noodle with shrimps? <laughs> right, okay. Um, I don't like fish and chips and I love noodles, but no shrimp because I'm vegetarian. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. so so you will I, go for I the, like noodles the noodles. Then. Okay, yeah, I like the All noodles. All right. So yeah. so then, thank you, Leslie. I think you through those simple questions, you say a lot of interesting things. So now um, we are all three beautiful ladies in this room, in this virtual room. So we're going to ask the very first questions about women leadership. And as you know, as well as an inclusive action now, uh, how the women leadership will play an essential role in our economic recovery and how will they lay the groundwork for the future resilience? What okay, do you think you about that? that? Thank you for that first question. I think 
I think this is all from my personal opinion because uh, we're in the unknown stage at the moment. This pandemic has uh, opened up a completely different world to us. Its impact has not yet been fully measured. We don't know the full impact. So we can only um, surmise and predict the way uh, that the future will uh, shape itself. But I think we have to take this uh, devastating situation of the pandemic and look at how we can make things better, how we can improve. And I think this is a great opportunity to expose uh, women, to expose females who have the more sort of softer social understanding and the impact on how this has affected not only businesses, people personally, people's families, and I think it needs to bring us back to a very simple time. I think companies got lost in growth, in bottom line, in capex, in opex. And I think this is where women have that softer edge that they now need to give their thoughts, give their input on how we reshape things. Because if we think about it, uh, this has been a great period uh, for digitalization and how uh, technology has played a very key role. However, women are users of technology, you know, 50%. However, very few are involved in the design phase. Very few get involved in research and development. And we need to shift that focus. We need to have more women involved because the world will be different. And we need to have uh, their mindset, their different thought process on how we can make technology work. And women have a lot to offer. And I think now um, women need to challenge more. They need to bring a lot more of their ideas to the table. They need to definitely have a seat at the table. Now, um, within Huawei, we have 20% female leadership. Now, that's very good for a technology company. However, over the coming years, we need to expand on that. We need to improve that. And now is the perfect time for women's voices to be heard more and heard more at a senior level. Absolutely. You know, I think one of the things that we are very conscious here and uh, ETP to, to make it short and instead of Empoderate to Puedes, to make it short to ETP, we believe that uh, the new wave, uh, all the small businesses, everybody has to be digitalized, you know? And I think uh, we, we talk a lot to, to women, and, but we have to start from the, from the young age. We need to have more women that code, you know? We need to have more women that love physics and mathematics and artificial intelligence. And so, and the power is within us. And so, we have to plant the seeds for Paula, Leslie, and myself to bring it to the world, you know, because, you know, Paula has three beautiful girls and we need to make sure that they choose this type of uh, new opportunities in the future because we want, like you say, Huawei want to see more uh, ladies in, 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 in top positions, but the rest of the multinationals one the same so it is a very good uh, first recommendation now if we move out of the ladies and we just open up to the small own, own business you know at this moment through the pandemic they are really in a very vulnerable economic downturn everything is going down a lot of people are losing jobs and uh, it is quite difficult for small companies to have access to finance and to support and the security and, and the scaling is going to be even more tough in the, in the next months and probably even in the next two, three years. So what recommendations will you give to those people and in what areas of their leadership they should work? I, 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 you're absolutely right. I think there's going to be some very tragic consequences of this pandemic uh, with job losses, uh, companies uh, not being able to survive. So we have to uh, look at ways that uh, larger organizations uh, can support the SMEs. 
and how larger organisations can collaborate more with governments on programmes that ultimately support the SMEs and how they can survive. So it, it is a, it's a very diverse uh, question and it will vary from country to country. You know, uh, uh, every country is socially impacted uh, in a different way from this pandemic. But at the, the core, we have to look at how we can secure um, organisations. So I think it's a case of uh, the leaders thinking out of the box. It's not what they did in the past. The past fitted the situation of the past. We are now facing the new normal. So they need to think wider. They may need to diversify their business. They may need to look at converging with another business. If they do a, a certain, um, um, they're in a certain industry. I know, for example, retail. Many of the retail industry um, reduced certain part of manufacturing and focused on uh, protective clothing, you know, masks. So I think companies now need to think how their business can survive, incorporating new opportunities. These challenges will bring new opportunities. So again, I think it's thinking wider, it's using every resource that they have available. So communicate, communicate with government, see what they're looking for. How can these organizations, even small businesses, governments all have a requirement to get their economy back on the road, back to recovery. So maybe they could uh, communicate with the government, the local authority, and find out how they can support. Is it an initiative in a new direction, you know, protective clothing or equipment, how they can support the recovery? And it will give them a new revenue stream. It will give them a new line of business. But I think forget the old ways and look at diversification. And also uh, speak with the banks, how you can uh, look at um, some extensions, some loan extensions, some repayment terms. And also if you're a small company and you are a partner of a large vendor, um, how you can, um, or they can support you financially with uh, quicker invoicing, you know, repayment terms, help you with that capital coming through your business much quicker because you no longer have that spare uh, financial uh, um, backup that you may previously have had. I think it's diversification and I think it's thinking outside the box. But leaders have to think for their employees. They have to think of a way strategically to enable their employees to survive and their families to survive. And I think we all have a greater responsibility now is not just about the company, it's about the wider impact on society. And I think that's going to be the change. And I think authority will be open to how we can all work together because governments want jobs. They want, you know, people in employment. So how we can achieve that mutually benefiting, I think this is the new norm. And I think be brave, ask the questions. You know, put yourself out there, go out there. What can I be doing? How can I support you? Come up with ideas. Just completely think outside the box. Yes, well, thinking outside the box, I would like to ask another question. Um, you know, Huawei has a very large enterprise unit and it's keep mm -hmm. growing. And I hope that uh, they will continue to do that. Uh, most of our uh, members are Latin speaking members who are very fond of your products. Um, what can enterprise solutions could do for the Latin community? And are there any things that our uh, listeners could see? Oh, that is an idea that I never thought about it, that I might go and knock the doors of of the enterprise world of uh, Huawei, because a lot of people know your phones, but a lot of people don't know all the nice products uh, that they can have in the enterprise side. What can you, okay. advice can you give us to all these communities? Thank you. The enterprise business of Huawei uh, has a lot of capacity and opportunity. We are in multiple uh, vertical mar markets, such as uh, um, 
automotive, such as utilities, um, uh, banking, financial, education, medical. We have all of these vertical markets and each of these vertical markets have a whole host of uh, a product portfolio, a very extensive portfolio. Um, they're very traditional from uh, servers, routers, to data centers, uh, to much, much smaller uh, you know, products on a, 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 a smaller scale that can um, support even in education and many, many of the vertical markets. So I, I think uh, the enterprise is very open, it's very engaging, it wants to help uh, organizations, it wants to build up new partnerships, new business opportunities. Um, you know, we're in cloud, we're in AI, AI is the way forward. Uh, we're working on smart smart cities, all of these areas. And if your business is even just on the uh, periphery of that, on touch point, still explore how you can get on that stage, how you can then become a part of that solution. So um, I would recommend reaching out uh, the enterprise to the organization, have your business, have maybe your business model, and then look as to how you can work and collaborate with Huawei on a solution. And as I've said, governments and authorities are looking to drive the economy. And if they can work with local uh, small businesses, that would be a win-win. Because one of the things Huawei wants to do, it wants to establish itself in the local ecosystem. And it doesn't say it has to be a big, a big, uh, you know, network provider. Uh, certainly, the enterprise uh, organisation deals with many thousands of small businesses. So, look at a way, have an idea, and then reach out to collaborate with Huawei. They are very open to listen. Well, the, I have to tell you that inside our foundation, we started last week an incubator for young people. You know, to create uh, new. Uh, companies to grow new companies and as you know Latin America needs a lot of things in education and I'm gladly uh, I'm like what you're saying you know there is a lot of diverse societies uh, despair in our society societies in Latin America so I think I'm going to work with these young talents together with Paul and the rest of our team and we will try to make a proposal to see if uh, your multinational will be willing to to give us some advice on how to make those uh, small my mini mini small companies to make them a little bit bigger and maybe we can uh, partner with some of uh, uh, some of this uh, young talent of the future with the uh, grants uh, from Latin America with some of the solutions that you guys can offer we really need to have access to talent we need access to brains you know for these mm. young people to you know incubate these new companies and to Maybe we can flourish one or two from ETP and make them see them grow in the future. We will be very happy as part of our social impacts to create something like that. So thank you for that. So let's go then to the next uh, big question. Artificial intelligence, Leslie, nothing new for you or for me. But for the rest of the world, is something that we're starting to hear more and more. Artificial intelligence is starting to shape our lives. The things that we do, we are now buying products and a machine is answering. We are not talking to humans anymore. So what are the benefits of artificial intelligence? And how can we have a more evenly distributed uh, power between people, nature, and robots, and artificial and intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for the big yes, question, yeah. but I want it's to big, know. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it is a big question. And again, from my personal opinion, I have you know three boys uh, that are all in the uh, job market. And I would hate to think uh, the future and when they ultimately have children, that robots will take over the world. I have to uh, sort of, from my opinion, reinforce that I see artificial intelligence as complementing 
our society. It is making things work smoother, more efficient, uh, to enable us to focus on, on other areas. So for example, a lot of the manufacturing will be uh, automated and using artificial intelligence. But that means the humans still need to run the machines. The humans still need to program the machines. They still need to do you know, the quality checking, the shipping, the logistics. So it means the uh, diversification of jobs. It's a shift of jobs from one area, which are very meaning, uh, meaningless in that they're just manual. And we can start to use our brain power more. Uh, we can also start to develop more. We can focus on what is priority for the future. We, you know, we need to become a greener uh, society. We need to focus on climate. And this is where the humans can play a really important role on how we devise AI to support the interests of the future. I think climate will have a big impact. We also want safer, cleaner um, air, get rid of pollution. And that's how AI can support. Um, but I still think we need humans in the research, in the coding, in the programming. So I think we have to think about our opportunities. We can all start using our brains again. We can all start having the time to think strategically, think of new ideas. We've lost that time for creativity. We're all so busy running our daily lives and we have to think AI can improve our time it can improve education it can improve the medical facilities you know sometimes um, you know, we will evolve that robots ultimately could perform um, operations the waiting list and the health of people will improve because there will be less waiting time for them to get that you know operation that will bring their quality of life back to where it was before so we have to think of the positive but that takes humans in order to design to run all of that system um, so I, I i think a lot of people see it as a replacement i see it as a, a complement and an enhancement to our quality of life going forward but we need more people coming through with this capability so there's a great opportunity uh, as you say for our youngsters uh, at education levels we need to get the buy-in at around age seven we need to make technology exciting, fun, enjoyable, that we have these people that they can see they can make a difference. We would all have to make a difference to the world in whatever sphere that we're doing. And if we can encourage these youngsters to get into this technology and to get into the design and the future of AI, they can shape a much better world going forward. Absolutely. And I think that's where the opportunity is. But we need to sell it to them. We need to get that excitement yes i like your your thoughts you know um, um a few years back around four years ago i wrote a white paper on how to put um, artificial intelligence or robots in the board you know i was a little bit tired that you know the inequalities between men and women and i thought okay if women can only be a quote how about we replace some of those men for robots and artificial intelligence because at least they can make decisions faster with the, the right data, you know, without any politics and any complications. But um, you're right, it has to be a complement uh, and, uh, and not a replacement. But I would love to see a one or two robots in the, on the board as well. But then it, <laughs> we'll see if my white paper will be put to practice in one of these companies. But yes, the recognition of making a phone for the young people, that's a fantastic recommendation. So, and that's a critical role for our uh, society, the parents, the teachers, everybody in our society and how to encourage all these young people and companies or, or the, our new groups like ETP are also quite important. Now if we move to the next big, big subject, uh, the jobs of the future. What did you recommend, Leslie? We know that artificial intelligence robots are going to be here, uh, networks, Wi-Fi's, and everything will be expanding. 
So where are the recommendations for the people who are just going to start studying or just graduating? What do you think are the jobs of the future? Where will they, they should focus? I, I think uh, for me, what uh, I'm seeing, certainly within Huawei, when we're recruiting our graduates and liaising, we have relationships with uh, hundreds and hundreds of universities uh, where we start engaging through, uh, through labs, through collaborations. We have an initiative called Tech for All. That's where we have a smart bus. Um, we have a digital uh, night. We encourage uh, uh, students to get involved in STEM subjects. So that's the science, technology, oh, engineering, wow. and mathematics. They are, they are the, key, the key areas that will be needed going forward. So uh, there's lots of uh, analysis out there, data statistics about the gap in talent, uh, the talent for the future. And it is recognized, um, I don't have the latest data, but when I did look about uh, six months ago, they recognized in the next two years, there will be a gap of 500,000 people to go into organizations in this area alone, in the STEM subjects. It is the future. It is where they will have long-term uh, job opportunities, career development, um, as organizations will all look to go down you know, the AI route, the uh, you know, digitalization, transformation is absolutely key to the future and these are the, the uh, this is the expertise the skills this is the gap so even for Huawei we're, we're competing in a very small pool now to get these talent uh, uh, people not only you know the current existing talent in this technology but also the graduates coming through the pipeline less and less students are studying these key technology subjects so that's where I would recommend and subjects. I would love to, to hear how our group ETP and your company, we could do something for convincing the Latin America students and, and the people that we work with uh, to, so they can pay attention to that because we know that our Latin uh, graduates will have a big problem. All these areas that you mentioned, I don't think they are in their curriculum so i think we should find a way to engage some universities some uh, even high schools and see how we can bring that message forward because we really really need to create new jobs in the latin speaking countries as well and otherwise we're going to create this digital divide where some of these young people asians and yeah. europeans are going and moving forwards and the Forward, rest yeah. africa and latin america will stay behind yeah it will create a, a social uh, a social divide and and that that difference will be very difficult for then those countries to catch up so i certainly know that in Huawei, um certainly in many areas of uh, the globe and i definitely know in africa we have something called uh, the Digital, digital fuck, and that's where it will take technology. It will give uh, children and schools that operate in very remote areas, very rural areas, that they may not even have Wi-Fi. It gives them the opportunity to access all of this technology with a truck that will travel around very rural parts. And as I said, we also have the smart bus. We collaborate with uh, more than 600 universities for education of students where we give them access to technology on this bus. And again, it will travel around because we have to get that interest. We have to get that excitement and we have to bridge any uh, you know, job opportunities. And we cannot have all of the talent in one side of the world. It is, it is unfair, it disadvantages. There are already too many disadvantaged, uh, disadvantaged uh, people. So um, I would love to explore that. So I'm not sure how far in Latin America, but I do think that is something we can explore. As, as soon as you know when that bus or the other bus, one of these two buses is 
just leaving America and going from Mexico to the South, we would love to know what it is also for Spain, because we would like to organize together with uh, our uh, members, visit to that bus, and so we can invite all the young kids. Uh, even we have a lot of contacts. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a, um, a conference about uh, the way the school system has changed in Mexico. Paula was part of that, and we had a lot of people from the government, from education, from private schools and not private, and we talk a lot about that. And I think we have a very good community that we can uh, plug together with uh, with that uh, uh, boss and your company, that of course, to see yeah. how far we can get and maybe, I don't know, create some some work or some alliances or something for for these people yeah. to benefit and that we encourage young talent and and middle and high school kids or university uh, students to go through that and specify and and focus in these areas where those jobs are needed. As you mentioned, it Absolutely. will be a big gap. Yes. Yeah. So I know certainly in Spain, um, we reached 18,000 students. So I know to date the smart bus has, has operated in Spain and so far touched 18,000 um, students. And also this is where we can build up um, our relationship with, with these potential talents of the future. And hopefully if they excel in these sub subjects, um, we could look at offering, you know, internships, job opportunities, you know, graduate programs, which we do operate. Um, so that would be, again, that would be a win-win. Well, and that if, would be, if you can uh, find a way to put that boat, that boat in a boat and bring it to Latin America, we <laughs> would be so, so grateful. And we will promise we will organize lots of things around that boat because we do have a big community uh, uh, and yeah. we keep, we are growing and we have a dedicated uh, community for learning and we just want to continue innovating like i mentioned we're starting with the incubator part that we want all right uh, leslie uh, time is flying so but i want to keep asking you many many questions so let's let's move ahead then outside of the artificial intelligence which anyways is all around us but um, let's talk about uh, a little bit more about the pros and the cons of working remotely. You know, through the pandemic, uh, we have to adjust and we have to work from home. But how is our employees being affected? The relation managers, collaboration teams is being affected. How is the relation uh, changing? What do you recommend in this big, big area? This is a big area um, and for us we put um, a lot of effort in place to ensure uh, that within uh, Huawei uh, productivity performance has not uh, been impacted. However, if we just look at remote working, um, that is um, a new uh, situation that we're finding, this lockdown, this pandemic working from home. So it heavily relies on uh, technology. So technology really has come to the forefront um, of the pandemic. And I think organizations that have this technology can enable their employees to work from home have uh, had less impact because business can run. There are, like this technology here, we can still conduct our daily meetings. We can still keep in communication. We have great Wi-Fi connectivity. We have our uh, mobile phones. Um, we're able to share presentations. We're able to keep that communication going. Um, again, it's it's not easy for many managers. Many managers and leaders have a certain style. You know, I need to sit with you in front of me. We need to have that immediate dialogue. This puts it in a different sort of dimension, a different frame. So it takes more effort. And I think managers have to learn to manage remotely. So one of the things we did within Huawei, and we did it immediately within uh, a few weeks of the lockdown, we delivered training to 
employees and to managers on how to manage themselves, how to collaborate, how to communicate. And there's many different forms and each team would adopt the way that it found suited, you know, their team. Um, it, it relies on a lot of trust. You have to trust your employees. You can't see them sat in the office. Uh, this is a new mindset. So it's really uh, taken people out of their comfort zone. You know, I could be in an office with you. I can see you there every day and I can think you're working. Suddenly, when I can't see you, I think, well, is the work being done? So we have to trust and we have to empower our, our employees to deliver the results. And we check the results and we check in. So for my team, we have a daily communication. We just have a touch point on what we have done, the challenges we're still facing, what we need to still focus on. So communication has become ever, ever, ever more important. Um, but each manager has to find their rhythm, find their way that suits their team best. For the deployment, they have to still touch base with the customer. And in fact, it's an opportunity to strengthen relationships with the customer because you can, it's easier to have these meetings like this as opposed to fixing time in the diaries. People have got more time on the hand because there's less time spent commuting. So we as individuals need to think of ways how we can capitalize on that extra time that is available, but also understand that working from home can bring more work. It needs much more effort. And I think we have to be open and we have to be flexible. And I don't think organizations will succeed and managers will succeed in leading teams if they don't trust, empower and offer flexibility. I mean, discipline is a big word, you know, and right now by yes. not going out is also our moral, our uh, spiritual mind, everything is is going a little bit loop, and then we have yeah. going up, you know, like a roller coaster, right. you know? Yeah, so what we have also done, because we have to remember that not everybody is, is comfortable in this situation. Many people are feeling anxious, suffering from anxiety, uh, have feelings of isolation, may feel lost. So we have also been training the managers on how to care for their employees, how to take care of their well-being, um, how to ensure that they don't feel isolated. And we've also appointed um, in uh, some of the countries um, a welfare officer. So if, for example, a I welfare am officer, suffering. That sounds interesting. Tell yes. us a little bit more about that. Yeah, like so a that, psychologist that is, that is or something like that? No, no, no. So we have psychologists that are doing training from our headquarters. But let's say, for example, in uh, the Düsseldorf office in Germany. So we have uh, uh, the delivery service team, very large team. Um, and managers manage teams of, you know, 30, 50 people. They can't keep in touch on a one-to-one -one with every employee daily. So they have their team meetings. However, that team has been assigned a welfare officer, maybe two or three, that that is a person that will touch base with these people. They will be there at the end of a phone, end of you know whatever method of communication. If I'm feeling anxious, if I'm suffering, if I have a problem, they are there to listen, to help, and then to escalate within the business if necessary. It gives people the comfort to know that there is someone there for them. They may not need to utilize that, that service, but it's knowing because people are suffering during this pandemic. People do feel lost and very concerned. And the lockdown is one thing, but how do we give people the confidence that it's safe to return to the office, that it's safe to return to work, safe to get back on that bus? You know, this is the next hurdle, this is the next stage. So we have to accept that we need the manager, we need the supervisor, we need uh, the HR function, but we also need to provide the welfare and the well-being for these employees. So through all these multiple channels, we hope that the employee has a path to communicate and raise their concern. This is a I have a question. I have a question. Listening to you, I find that this two very important aspects to develop in people during this time. Um, one is 
this one that you're you're talking about this the wellness of the person within about their feelings their their motives and whatever is happening inside their head because of of all the the scary moments that we're living but also it's very important like i've seen uh, in all my co-workers that self-management or teaching self-management to people that usually didn't have it because they have a boss and they have someone always telling them what to do and how to do it and the timing and whatever this time has been very difficult with self-management for 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 most of the people that i know so what do you think about this and what do you do to teach your team how to manage this in the best way to be very productive and and be how do you say um happy happy with what you do and be satisfied with your job that's a that's a very good uh, question paula and you know, there's no one size that fits all. But my advice, and certainly uh, what I do within my team, is uh, routine communication and set tasks. So if we have a daily check-in, it's not just to make sure that they're, they're doing the work, but it's also to encourage them, to motivate them. And um, we have a little uh, end of the day, we have a quick summary of the things we have done. Uh, to make sure that we're staying aligned. Alignment is critical. Now, whether you check in every day or whether you check in once a week, but as long as you're setting the, the correct expectations during whatever period and have that routine alignment. And I found with my team just doing a very quick five minute, I don't want to detail report at the end of the day, but just a very quick high level uh, note of uh, the key activities that are done during the day. It helps them remain focused. It's all about remaining focused and find a way that helps your team to remain focused. Because at the end of the day, we still have to perform. We still have to be measured on results. So find a way on how you can keep that momentum and working from home and all being remote doesn't ultimately impact on the, the target and achieving the target. But it's a lot more communication. It takes managers to spend a lot more time on the communication and understand that one, one of your team members say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I don't need anyone to check in. Here's my report, I'm doing all my job every day. Other people may need holding hand. They may need a little bit more guidance, a little bit more looking through. And that's where your emotional intelligence as a manager, as a leader comes into play. And that's, that's the new requirement now going forward. There's a lot more emphasis on emotional intelligence. Sure, uh, I find that's the most important. Thank you. Leslie, millennials yes. are leaving a lot of them alone in this period. They're feeling really, really bad. What would you recommend to them? For millennials, it, 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 it's, a tough, it's a tough time because they're, they're isolated, they're away from their families, they may have moved for jobs. It is about reaching out, it is about asking, it is about not being afraid or being ashamed to say, hey, I'm lonely. Don't just rely on social media, use your network, use every platform that you have available. Um, join some online um, forums keep that communication keep that engagement with the world active and do as much as you can um, do some additional learning have a learning group uh, think of ways that you can keep your mind focused and uh, not be distracted and overwhelmed because they are alone and they may find this a very overwhelming experience because you know it is new you know, we've we've seen a lot. We, you know, we've gone through companies, and you know, we, we can we're uh, much more resilient. I think uh, we have to understand that our millennials have not faked times like this. So, what can we do to support them and guide them and get them not to be afraid to say, "Hey, I'm struggling. Hey, I'm I'm finding it difficult during this period." Yeah, sounds very very good. 
Leslie, I, I have a question and that has always been in my mind since I've been working to, for so many multinationals and for a long, long time, 35 years of my career in, in telecom and IT. How do we manage in one side the robots, in the middle the humans, and in the other nature? How do we package all together in an ecosystem where leadership, innovation, creativity, and social economics can flourish? Sorry, <laughs> too much <laughs> in my questions, as always. What do you think that, about all fine. of this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it is a big question. And I just think we have to look at it in very simple terms. Let's not overcomplicate. If we just think simply, this is the world as we know it going forward. Therefore, we cannot resist. We cannot stop change. You know, we're, we're evolving. This is the, the world of transformation. It's a time of uh, transformation and more digitalization. So we have to think, and it comes back to how we can complement and make the world and society a better place. And by having a combination and using the AI, having the humans in a better world, a safer world, uh, a more harmonious world, um, we can hopefully achieve that. And that then drives you know, economy, that makes uh, the world safer. We hopefully have more uh, organizations flourishing, looking at uh, different startups, you know, we have to think, how we be the next Facebook, the ne you know, the next Apple? We have to think how we can look and complement The next society. Huawei. The next Huawei, absolutely. I mean, Huawei is just, you know, it was founded in 87, so it's still a young baby. Uh, um, and, you know, there are other opportunities, you know, in Shenzhen in China, there are hundreds of startup companies and we have to think how we can be a part of that game. Hopefully, and I think we will have a lot more startups. Hopefully, we'll be one startup from ETP from Latin America who grows to compete with all these American and Asian companies. That will be absolutely uh, my way to inspire and motivate all this young team from Latin America, Leslie. It's been a pleasure yeah. having you. Let's see if Paula has any questions or any questions from the audience. Actually, the audience has been a little bit quiet, so okay. <laughs> we don't have, you know, we don't have punctual, punctual uh, questions from them. But I think in, in this afternoon or the days to come, this is going to be a very watched uh, conversation because, oh, it has a lot of um, Material, material, yeah, to, yes, a lot yeah, of material to grow yes. and to develop and to think about and to work in and to work with, and mm. I feel so honored, so honored to be here to know you, to have listened. Thank you, to you my today. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. really. Thank you, really, really. Thank you. You're you know, well, yeah, you're I don't welcome. have any more questions. I've, I've, I, I have a lot of questions for me and my development in the world. <laughs> no. Yeah, so. well, I would like to finalize uh, by saying thank you to Leslie. Leslie's always been an inspirational leader, an inspirational uh, uh, HR uh, personality. And I believe that um, the way that she explained lots of things to us today, we can take and study all, all her wisdom and transfer a lot of those wisdom to our community in yeah. Latin America and Spain. And I'm going to ask you once again that you do everything possible to put a, a bus in a, in a boat and bring it to Latin America. <laughs> we really need to explore how we can bring better educational systems uh, to Latin America to stop the digital divide. Um, I experienced it personally with my family and the workers of my family, and the despair is very big. And, and this is just one tiny example of the big despair that we are starting to see in Latin America. And I think 
education, innovation, creativity through companies like yourselves that they can bring help from the, from the beginning and, and grow these young talents will be highly, highly uh, welcome. And so I hope you guys can do something. And if we can be the bridge to that through our the foundation, we will be pleased to do so. And well, just thank you, Leslie. And uh, it's lovely to see you once again. And I hope I can give you a hug thank soon, you. you know? <laughs> thank you for a virtual hug. It's been my pleasure and, 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 and let's keep the communication going. And I think we all have to embrace whatever change is coming and make sure we are part of that change. And Absolutely. I think everyone has that opportunity. Three powerful so. ladies in this, uh, in this session, in this virtual room. We will give you uh, very soon a, a, a present. We will give you a, a recorded uh, YouTube uh, of this, of this uh, um, discussion okay. and I hope you can share it with uh, the right people into your organization so we can continue the dialogue. It doesn't need to be in the air but we would like to continue the dialogue on how we can bring help in education through the Latin community and to all our members. We thank you from our bottom of our heart. Thank you, yes. thank you. It's been a thank pleasure. So I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Okay. Take care, stay well, and stay Thank safe. Y para, para Thank toda you, la gente, para la gente que nos estuvo siguiendo en inglés y en español, muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta tarde en una sesión más de Expert Views. Quiero nada más recordar que el miércoles vamos a tener a Nancy Nemeth, que es, nos va a hablar sobre Artificial Intelligence y Leadership. So, no se la pierdan. Muchas gracias. Thank you so, so much. Leslie, it was a pleasure to meet you. And God bless you. Have a nice, nice evening. And see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.